As a pastor for uh, 35 plus years now, I, I, I have heard a wide range of brokenness stories. The thought, I'm done, can be painted with a really broad brushstroke. Uh, besides having walked through my own, I have walked with people through so many painful experiences, from disease and loss to breakups and bankruptcies to a call in the middle of the night that I'll never forget. Uh, it was my second year of full-time vocational ministry. I was a, I was a 24-year-old youth pastor at Faith Fellowship on Oak Tree Road. Um, but as a staff minister at Faith Fellowship, we all shared the counseling duties. And, uh, and boy, do I have some stories I can't tell. Like my very first counseling appointment, the guy was demon-possessed. No, like for real. Like manifesting. How many of you know you can't counsel demon possession? But I had to try. Anyway, um, we all had a day of the week that we were responsible for, uh, for appointments, for walk-in counseling. And, and, and then we also had to, um, we had to take turns carrying a ministry pager, a beeper. Remember, this was 1988, so this is several years before everyone was surgically attached to their mobile phones. So I got a page at, at around 3 a.m. One, one morning. Um, so in a sleepy fog, I go to the telephone and I call the number, and a very sober, level-headed man said hello. He thanked me for calling back so quickly and proceeded to tell me one of the most horrific stories I've ever heard. Um, he had put his four children into the family van to pick up their mother who worked the night shift. He worked during the day. She worked during the night to make ends meet. And he would put the kids sleeping, basically, in the van at, at before 2 a.m. to go pick up their mother every night. It's, you know, how many of you know sometimes you got to do whatever you got to do? And so he put the four kids, four, four girls, four daughters into the van and went to pick up their mother at the, the warehouse that she was working. And after his wife got into the van, not far from work, a drunk driver ran a stop sign and plowed into the van and, uh, at an extremely high speed. And uh, all four of his beloved girls and his wife died. His youngest was launched from the van, and he went and picked her up and held her while she passed. He emerged from the accident with nothing more than bruises outwardly. And having said that, here's what I want you to hear loud and clear this morning. I want you to hear it with the ear of your soul. In three and a half decades of hearing these stories and walking with people down paths of brokenness, I still have never encountered anything that was totally hopeless. Never. And I know you're probably thinking, well, that last story sure sounds like it. Listen to me carefully. Today's message is called, You Are Not Done. Like if you have a pulse, you're not done. As long as you're still breathing, you're not done. Because God repairs every kind of brokenness. And that is not a cliche and that is not some sort of religious panacea. According to Psalm 103, he heals all your diseases, physical dis-ease, mental dis-ease, emotional dis-ease, spiritual dis-ease, social dis-ease, 
psychological disease, he heals all your diseases. For every ordeal, every blow, every wound, every traumatic event, for every tragedy, there is a remedy in God's Word. Now, God's answers are not always instantaneous. And I think that's where some of us get really tripped up. We're looking for the quick fix. We're looking for the instant download. But when Jesus said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, recover, that sounds to me more like a process. Line upon line, precept upon precept, from faith to faith, glory to glory, strength to strength, you have need of endurance so that after you've done the will of God, you can receive the promise. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. All that sounds to me more like a process than something that's immediate. So his answers are not always immediate, but they are always effective at the deepest levels. So over the next several days, I met with that grieving, and hus uh, grieving husband and father that I just mentioned. I, we, we planned the funeral. Um, I initiated, I, I, I officiated the funeral in his home. And I'll, but I'll never forget, I'll never forget my initial impression from the first phone call in the middle of the night because there was something so unexpected about this gentleman's demeanor. There was something about his ability to keep himself together. It was remarkable. So when I hung up the phone that night, I, I, I was perplexed and, and I thought, how does he do it? Like how, how can he even have a conversation? How do those words come out of his mouth with coherence of any kind? Like, how is it that he's not losing every shred of his sanity right now? How will he go on? How, how is it that he's not done? And a verse came to me. Right there in the darkness, right there in my pajamas that night. And it is the same scripture that God gave Pastor Elena the morning after our dear Justin had passed two years ago. <laughs> Justin's birthday is December the 9th. 12-9. And the next morning, God gave Pastor Elena 2 Corinthians 12-9. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Grace. God's unmerited favor, God's undergirding power, God's presence and the strength that only he could provide would be sufficient. Even, even for this. And in both instances, our loss and this gentleman's loss. God's grace was exactly what he promised it would be. Enough. 